welcome to Wheels Up with Sunrise on Wheels. I'm Michelle Newman. Today's program is all about winter fun. And like all Wheels Up episodes, it has three segments. First, I'll take you on a trip around the world, looking at some fun winter activities. Next, we'll craft with Caroline, making a fun snowman, a sled, and watch a fun milk and soap experiment. Next, I hope you'll play along as we play winter fun trivia. Everyone can have an awesome time in the winter, from crazy snowball fights to building magical snowmen to beautiful frosty landscapes. There are many ways to get outdoors and enjoy the winter season. Today, I thought it would be fun to take a trip around the world, looking at different ways we can enjoy winter. Winter is the coldest season of the year, and depending on where you live in the world, winter happens at different times. The seasons are based on the rotation and tilt of the Earth in relation to the Sun. The Earth orbits the Sun along an egg-shaped path, taking a whole year, 365 days, for the Earth to go all the way around the Sun one time. During that yearly journey, there are times where we aren't in the right position to receive a ton of sunlight because the Earth is also tilted. It's always tilted in the same direction, so only part of the Earth can be facing the sun at a time. The equator is an imaginary line around the middle of the Earth that divides the Earth into two halves, northern half and southern half. When it's winter for the top half in places like North America and Europe, it's summer for the bottom half in places like Australia and South Africa. If you live near the equator, the sun shines directly on you all year. So how warm or cold your seasons are depends on how far away you live from the equator. Winter comes after fall and before spring. In the United States, our winter begins on December 21st and lasts until March 20th. It's usually the coldest time of year, and in some places it brings freezing temperatures, snow and ice. Even places that don't get snow or freezing cold weather still have a winter season, making the days shorter, nights longer, and ultimately a whole lot cooler. Winters often filled with clouds, rain, and sometimes snow. Snow results from tiny crystals of ice that fall to the earth. Little water vapors in the air freeze up in the clouds when the temperature is very cold. When the crystals join together, they form snowflakes. Some snowflakes are made of a single ice crystal, while others, more elaborate snowflakes, are made up of as many as 200 ice crystals fused together. Wow! No two snowflakes are the same because each one is formed from its own unique makeup and its own special pattern, but all of them have six sides. While you may have heard someone say it's too cold to snow, there's no truth to this. Snow can always fall if it's cold out and there's moisture in the air. Did you know that 80% of fresh snow is composed of air? I know we think of snow as being a solid white substance that easily clumps into balls and can be thrown at your friends. In fact, it's not white at all. Its white appearance comes from snow's natural reflection of sunlight, bouncing nearly all light back and creating a white look. Sometimes snow looks blue because when light has to travel further through a larger, thicker piece of ice, it retains more color. There's even something called watermelon snow that looks reddish pink, as freshwater algae, who happens to love ice, lives in the snow and turns it a red color. So let's go outside and have some fun. First, we need to be dressed properly to keep our body warm and dry. Layers of clothing, coats, hats, mittens, scarves, warm socks, and boots. As Anna sings in Frozen, do you want to build a snowman? Building a snowman is a universally favorite snow day activity, if there is enough snow. First, scout the area. You want a little space to build and roll. Wet snow is best because it sticks together easier. Start small and begin by tightly packing a small ball of snow and get rolling. Roll your snowball around, making sure you pack it as you go. Go as big as you can. Repeat the rolling process with smaller balls. You can get some help to put them on top, the largest ball on the bottom, with each ball getting slightly smaller as you go up. Most people do three snowballs, but don't be afraid to try more. The most important part is to make your snowman yours. Decorate him with whatever you want, have, or can find. There's no wrong way. 
Sticks, coals, carrots are the classics, but you could be as creative as you want. Even if you can't go outside, you can make your own snowman. Here are some indoor snowman. This one's made with boxes. Here's one that uses cans. And this one uses rolled up paper. In February 2020, the tallest snowman in the world, 125 feet high, was built over 40 days in Austria. What do you think of this one? Have you ever made a snow angel? They're made in fresh snow by lying on your back and moving your arms up and down and your legs from side to side to form the shape of an angel. When finished, you'll see the appearance of an angel in the snow, the movement of the arms having formed the wings and the movement of the legs having formed the gown. The trick is to remove yourself from the snow without disturbing the angel. Bismarck, North Dakota holds the Guinness World Record for the most snow angels made at the same time in one place. 8,962 snow angels were created on the state capitol grounds. It doesn't matter how old you are. There's nothing quite as fun and freeing as getting outside for some exciting snow sledding adventures. When it comes to zipping down a snowy slope, there are a ton of sled options. There are tubes, plastic discs, snowboards, and more. If you have your sled, snow, and a safe sledding hill, you're ready to go. Remember to always sit face forward with your feet downhill. It's much safer and protects your head. Not a run of the mill down a hill. Here's the longest sled run in the world, found in the Austrian Alps. Looks like fun to me. If you like sledding, what do you think of snow tubing? Mostly found in the mountains near ski resorts and not in cities, these mountains rent tubes. Some even have contraptions to bring your tube up to the top of the mountain. Here's a really fancy one with fun glow lights. Skiing is somewhat similar to sledding, but instead of sitting, long strips of metal, wood, or plastic are attached to shoes or boots to glide over snow. It can be beautiful and exhilarating, but it's harder than it looks. There are two main types of skiing, downhill and cross country. Both require special equipment like ski boots, skis, and poles. Cross country skiing does not require hills, so there, if there is enough snow, you might be able to do it. It's a little like ice skating or walking across snow-covered terrain. You shift your weight from one leg to the other while maintaining your balance. Downhill or alpine skiing requires a specially groomed mountain with a means to transport you to the top of the hill. To begin, most of us use the snowplow turn, also known as the pizza slice, to keep from going too fast. The front ski tips of the skis are together and the tails wide apart with your knees rolled inward slightly. Some people prefer snowboarding. Your boots are fastened to a snowboard. Both activities are fast and a little scary. One of the first lessons you learn is how to fall. But once you really learn how to ski, it can be a little like flying. What do you think? Does it look scary or fun? There are so many beautiful places to ski. In Canada, the largest ski resort in North America is Whistler Blackcomb. Winter in California allows you to both surf and ski on the very same day. Only two hours from surfing in the Pacific Ocean to the lift lines at Bear Mountain. From sunny surf to the frozen turf in one day. Can you imagine? When the snow takes a hiatus in the northern hemisphere, most skiing and riding enthusiasts are forced to hang up their gear and find other activities. Of course, during our summer, starting in June, it's winter in the southern hemisphere. Nestled in the Andes Mountains, Portillo, Chile has big mountains, lots of snow, and sets the standard for classic ski experiences. The Southern Hemisphere's largest ski resort is set in the snowy Australian mountains in Perisher, Australia, made up of four unique villages that come together to supply Australians and tourists alike with over seven miles of skiable terrain. Snow, beautiful landscapes, and dogs. Dog sledding is a fantastic way of seeing the gorgeous landscapes around. Sliding along in a sleigh is a dreamlike experience where you can experience nature and all the wonders it has to offer up close and personal. The dogs don't seem bothered by the fresh dusting of snow on the ground. Their warm breath hangs in the cool air as they eagerly pull the sled along the trail. Apart from the jingle of the dog's collars, the pitter-patter of paws on the snow, 
and the occasional command, the team glides on in silence. It's quite surreal. How often are you pulled on a sled by a team of dogs through the most awe-inspiring landscape you've ever seen? When the world is blanketed in snow, bicycling become, can become a bit of a chore, and some riders turn to more conventional winter sports, such as skiing and snowboarding. But have you ever heard of ski bikes? No pedals, no chains, and unfortunately, no brakes. It's a mountain bike with skis in place of wheels. Speed is controlled by carving left and right, or as happens throughout, falling over. Ski biking looks mildly terrifying and enormously amusing. <laughs> Could you be tempted? Well, winter might make you think about ice hockey or even basketball. Have you ever tried broom ball? It's a fast-paced, exciting winter sport played on ice wearing sneakers. Two teams maneuver to try and score the ball into the opponent's net using broom ball sticks. Because it's played in sneakers, ice skating experience is not required. If you have a basic understanding of soccer or hockey, you know the main rules. There's a special broom ball stick, but real brooms will work just fine. A ball, soccer ball, or kickball will work for a casual game. Raising your stick to hit a ball above shoulder level is considered a high broom, and that's not allowed, and results in a penalty. Just like in hockey or soccer, hit the ball into the net. The winner is the team with the most goals. When I travel in the wintertime, my favorite activity is to combine a twirl on the ice with dazzling sightseeing, scrumptious food, and a blast of festive winter fun. In Vienna, Austria, you can skate on a beautiful ice area in front of the illuminated Vienna City Hall. Smack dab in the middle of the Crystal Kindle Market, it is surrounded by stands selling warming drinks and traditional Austrian food and features a number of idyllic ice paths that wind their way through a small park bathed in multicolored LED lights. Featured in movies such as Serendipity, Love Story, and Home Alone 2, the skating rink in the middle of Central Park is a symbol of New York City's winter magic. It provides stunning views of Manhattan's soaring skyscrapers. Couple this with any of the Big Apple's iconic winter attractions, and you're in for a movie-like experience to remember. Framed by the snowy Canadian Rockies and Victoria Glacier, this spectacular ice skating rink is outside the Fairmount Chateau Lake Louise in Banff National Park, and it allows visitors the one-of-a-kind opportunity to take a spin on Lake Louise. A wonderful hand-carved ice castle is built each year in the middle of the skating venue. Banff National Park in Canada is easily one of the most beautiful winter wonderlands with views of Canadian Rockies and an immense cast of wildlife. After an afternoon in the snow, I love to warm up with a hot chocolate. Well, it's time for our trip around the world looking at winter to come to an end. I hope you enjoyed looking at some really fun winter activities. I look forward to seeing you next time. Well, that was a lot of fun. Let's go craft with Caroline. My name is Caroline and I'm so excited to do arts and crafts with you today. Today's video was all about winter fun, so today we're going to do two really fun winter themed crafts. One is a popsicle stick sled and the other one is a 3D snowman and we're also going to do a really fun science experiment at the end. I hope you have fun! So now we're going to make a 3D snowman craft, so what you will need is one piece of paper for the background, and I'm using blue. And then you also need two pieces of white paper, glue, scissors, and then something to color with. So I'm using a white crayon so that it looks like snowflakes in the background. But you can also use markers, and you also need something to color the eyes, so I'm going to use a black marker. So first, I'm going to make the snowman's body. So I'm going to put the two pieces of my white paper together on top of each other and then fold it in half twice so that I get eight circles. I only am going to use seven, but that way I get eight. 
So now I'm going to cut out a circle. And if it's too hard to cut out, you can do this with one sheet of paper and then do it again with another sheet. So now I have my seven circles that I cut out. And to make the first part of its body, I'm going to take three of the circles and fold them in half like this. And I'm going to make the bottom circle first. So now I can take them apart and use my glue stick. Now I'm going to put glue on one side and then I'm going to stick it down on here. And then I'm going to put glue on this side and stick it on this part. Then put more glue here and stick it on here. And then finally put more glue here and stick it to the other side. So now I have the first part of my snowman and now I'm going to repeat this to make the other part of its body. So now I have both of the parts of my snowman's body and now I'm going to glue on the head with my extra circle right on top. And it can come off the page also so that it's even more 3D if you want it to. So now my snowman is almost finished, but it needs some arms. So I'm going to use my paper. I have some extra paper from when I cut out the circles. So I'm going to use that to make the arms, but you can also use some colored paper or more white paper if you ran out. So first I'm going to draw the arms and I'm going to make it look like tree branches because whenever I make real snowman, I use tree branches. So first I'm going to draw a long line and then three little fingers and then back down. And now I'm going to cut this out and make sure that you have two arms. So now, as you can see, I colored in my arms brown to make it more like tree branches. And now I'm going to cut out a hat. So I'm going to use some purple paper, but you can make it whatever color you want. And I'm going to do it just like this. I'm gonna draw a long rectangle like that, and then a square on top. And now I'm going to cut it out. So now I have my hat and my arms, and the last thing I need to make is a nose. So I have some extra white paper, and I'm going to cut out a triangle for the nose. And then I'm going to color it in orange. And then to make it 3D, I'm going to fold it back a little bit. And then I'm going to put some glue over here. And then stick it on like that so that it's 3D. So now that my snowman has its carrot nose, I'm going to glue on the hat the arms, and I'm also going to draw some snowflakes in the background, and I'm also going to draw on its eyes and its mouth. So now I'm all done with my snowman, and if you want, you can decorate your hat more, you can add a scarf, you can decorate it as much as you want, but this is how mine looks when it's finished. So now we're going to make a popsicle stick sled craft. So what you will need is a piece of string, and then you also need 10 popsicle sticks in total. So I'm using two blue and eight purple, but you can also use popsicle sticks that don't have a color and you can paint it when you're all finished. And then you also need a glue bottle. So the first thing you're going to do is line up eight of your popsicle sticks and make sure that they're all lined up next to each other. And then I'm going to take my glue bottle and put some glue on my blue popsicle sticks and then stick one here 
And then the other one goes a little bit lower, right here. And then I'm going to glue my string down up here. So, like this. And then you have to let it dry. So this is one I made another, a different time. And as you can see, I decorated it with some white crayons, which you can do also when your sled is all finished. And I also used some snowflake confetti. So if you have like confetti or gems or something you could decorate with, you could do that too. So now we're going to do a really fun science experiment. And to make it more winter themed, I'm going to use this snowman cookie cutter. So what you will need is a plate to put everything on, something to mix with, some food coloring, a little bit of dish soap, and some whole milk. So the first thing I'm going to do is pour the milk onto the plate. Like that. And then I'm going to put the cookie cutter in the middle right here. And then I'm going to pour the dish soap around the cookie cutter. Like that. And then I'm going to put the food coloring on the outside. And now I'm going to mix all around the cookie cutter. And as you can see, everything turns green except for the inside of the cookie cutter. So now it looks like a real snowman on the inside that stays like white like the snow. This food coloring and dish soap experiment is so awesome, I wanted to show you a close-up. Fill a bowl with an inch of whole milk. Drop food coloring into the bowl. If you space out the different colors, it will turn out really cool. Dip cotton swabs into dish soap and gently touch the surface of the milk with the swab. Watch the chemical reaction. The soap heads for the fat in the milk, creating an amazing burst of color. I hope you had fun making these fun winter crafts with me. Bye. Who's ready to play winter fun trivia? 10 questions, four answers, only one of which is correct. Who's ready to play? Question number one. How many sides does a snowflake have? A, four. B, six. C, eight, or D, it varies. How many sides does a snowflake have? It has B, six sides. Every time, isn't that amazing? Question number two. What percentage of fresh snow is composed of air? A, 25%, B, 50%, C, 80%, or D, 100%. What percentage of fresh snow is air? And the answer is C, 80%. That's a lot. Question number three, what color is snow? Is it A, white, B, blue, C, pink, or D, Colorless. What color is snow? You might think it's white, but it's D. Colorless. Sometimes it can appear blue or pink, but it's really colorless. Question number four. In the northern hemisphere, the first day of winter occurs in what month? A. October. B. November. C. December. Or D. D, January. In the Northern Hemisphere, where we live, in the United States, the first day of winter occurs in C, December. Question number five. What is another name for a snowplow? This is something you do when you're skiing. A, pizza. B, hamburger. 
C. Apple pie or D. Parallel. How do you begin learning how to ski? You use a pizza slice. It's A. Question number six. Where was the world's tallest snowman built in 2020? A. Bethel, Maine. B. Austria. C. Chile. Or D. Switzerland. Where was the world's tallest snowman built just in 2020? B. Austria. Previously, it was a snow woman in Bethel, Maine. Question number seven. Where can you ski in June? Hmm. A. Miami, Florida. B. Los Angeles, California. We are talking snow ski. C. Portillo, Chile. Or D. The Sahara Desert. Where can you go snow skiing in June? It's C. Portillo, Chile. Because it's in the southern hemisphere and their winter is when we have summer. Question number eight. Scientifically, why do we even have winter? A. Higher tides cause winter to come. B. Because the Earth is tilted on its axis. C. The Earth spins slower, resulting in winter. Or D. None of the above. I hope you know the answer. It's B. Because the Earth is tilted on its axis, sometimes being closer to the sun and sometimes further away. Question number nine. Which of these is not equipment used in cross-country skiing? A. Skis. B. Poles. C. Boots. Or D. Parachutes. Which of these is not an equipment used in cross-country skiing? And the answer is a D. Parachute. You don't need one of those. Question number 10. Broom ball is usually played on what type of surface? A. Snowy mountains. B. A gym floor. C. An ice rink. Or D. A grassy field. Broom ball is played on what type of surface? And the answer is C. Ice rink. But you don't need ice skates. You can use sneakers. Thanks for coming along. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching Winter Fun. If you'd like to watch more Wheels Up episodes, you can find us on YouTube at Sunrise Association. We have our own playlist, Wheels Up. I look forward to seeing you next time.